This episode of Juiced is full of juicy goodness. We're getting the lowdown on some very interesting sea creatures with some very interesting bodily functions. Carly Sparkle is back with another awesome how-to in recyclable craft. And we meet one of the wonderful wayfinding volunteers here at the hospital. Roll tape. Hey, my name's Matt. Welcome to Juice TV. We're at Lady Salinto Hospital and we've got an awesome show for you. We're going to see some sea animals first. Hi, I'm James. We're going to learn about some awesome sea creatures. Richard Watson here. That is a tropical sea cucumber, Cheyenne. OK. I'm going to touch it. <gasps> oh, my God. How does it feel? It feels slimy. Soft and slimy. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty soft, isn't it? Do you think a lot of animals might want to eat him if he's so soft? Probably. He'll be like a like a vegetable, a soft yeah. well, that's vegetable. Well, that's right. Yeah. So what do you reckon? How's he, what, how's he protecting himself, then? Probably, probably he's poisonous. How do you know he's poisonous? These are the bright colours. That's exactly right. Bright colours often means danger or warning. So it means stop, don't eat me. Don't put me in your mouth or I might make you sick or even kill you. Are you going to put him in your mouth? No way. Oh, that's right, then you can touch it, that's OK. Do you see those little branches that are there? Uh, yeah. Do, do you know what they're for? I do. What are they for? To catch plankton. Catch plankton? What's plankton? It's like, it's like a little animal and a little plant. Little animals and plants that float around in the water. Yes. So they use them to catch them and trap them, and then they drag the, the plankton into the mouth and they eat the, eat the plankton. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what that means, though? The sea cucumber's mouth is only for eating food. So you know what that means? What? It means they breathe through their bottom. <laughs> they do. They breathe through their bottom. That's pretty strange, isn't it? Yeah. Because their mouth is only for eating food. The other end, they go to the toilet, but they also breathe through their bottom. I wonder what their breath smells like. It's not going there. What is this? This looks weird. This here is a common black sea cucumber. Okay, I'm gonna touch it. Wait, no, I'm not gonna touch yeah, it. Yeah, you can touch it. Come on, reach in and have a touch <laughs> with your finger. No way. Yes, no. come on. There we go. Just go like that. Okay. Oh, that feels, it feels really weird. It feels like some sort of cotton. It does, doesn't it? Like a wet towel, doesn't it? Yeah. But did it look like it was going to be soft or did it look like it was going to be spiky? It looks like it's going to be spiky. So do you know what all those things that look like spikes are? What? That's these little tube feet. They use those for holding onto the rock and for walking along the bottom of the ocean. Do you know what these guys eat? No. And in the wild they eat the sand off the bottom of the ocean. That's weird. That is a bit weird. Do you know why they do that? I know why they do that. Why do they do that? Because it's tiny bits of food there. There is tiny little bits of food in the sand. And they poop sand too, don't they? So they poop out clean sand. They don't just poop out sand, they poop out clean sand. So they absorb all the food out of the sand in their tummy. Whatever's not food, out the back door. That's a bit weird. So guess what? The next time you go to the beach and you're lying on the sand, just remember where it came from. OK. <laughs> Look, can you see that? Yeah. You see that beautiful little orange on there? Do you know why he's got that orange colour? Because when he's in amongst the rocks and the corals, it helps him blend in and to hide, because there are some animals that might want to eat him. So that's camouflage again. Can you see the little tube feet underneath? Mm -hmm. Do you know what they're for? Mm -hmm. As he uses those to hold onto the rocks and to walk around on the bottom of the ocean. Now to meet this little guy, whose name is... Bob the Baby Brown Banded Bamboo Shark. Bob the Baby Brown Boo Shark. Bob the Baby Bamboo Shark. Bob the Baby Brown Banded Shark. Bob the Baby Bamboo Bamboo Shark. 
Bob the Baby Brown Bend and Bamboo Shark. Bob the Baby Brown Bend and Bamboo Shark. Oh. Richard, what is, this is a bamboo shark. How old is it? How old is the bamboo shark? Yeah. He's two years old. Huh. So that's not very old, is it? Harrison, huh? can you pass us this? Now, Diesel, do you know what that is? An uh, egg. That is a shark egg. Two years ago, Bob the bamboo shark came out of that egg. Huh. Yeah, and when he did, he was only that long. That's not very big, is it? No. Huh? No. But do you know what? When he grows up to be an adult, he's going to grow up to be... A big one. That long. One and a half Very metres big. long. That's how big he's going to get. But when he came out of there, he popped out of that in there, and Mum and Dad Shark weren't there to look after him. So do you know what that means? All the other animals want to eat him so he doesn't grow up to be this big. So when he came out of that egg, he had brown and white colours like he's got there now, and he's using that to hide. What word do we use when animals... Camouflage. Is... Camouflage. So he's using camouflage to hide amongst the sandy, rocky bottom of the ocean. As he grows up and gets bigger, though, he's going to change colour. Because he doesn't need to hide when he's big enough and strong enough to look after himself. He's going to become a grey-brown all over. Huh. Pretty cool. Yep. Why is there a lid on there? OK. Bob's got a lid on his container because, even though he's not moving around much now, he actually has the ability to jump clean out of that container. So we have to keep a lid on there to keep him in there. Is that a good idea? Yep. Now, do you think we should take it off just, just very carefully so we can have a good look at him? Yeah. If we're all nice and quiet and still, he won't jump out. Fingers crossed. Let's go. Let's have a look. All right. Can you see the fins on the top swaying a little bit? Do you know what we call those fins? They're called dorsal fins. Can you say dorsal fins? Dorsal fins. Dorsal fins. The dorsal fin is on top. So any surface of a marine animal that's on top is called the dorsal surface. There you go. So that's where you find their Hello. dorsal fins. Why do they have whiskers? OK. He's got whiskers. They look like whiskers, but they're called barbells. And they're actually two little folds of skin that come out from underneath his nostrils. Hmm. Now, he's a shark that finds his food off the bottom of the ocean and under the sand. So what he does is he swims along with those little whiskers along the top of the sand, and if he detects food under the sand with those whiskers, then he digs in and he finds the food, eats it, and then he moves on. So they're little detectors for finding food. I always, I like all these awesome animals. Thanks for coming. That's all right, mate. Thanks for having me. Wow, they look so slimy. Now it's time to find out about me. This week's host is officially known as Matthew. He loves heading to the beach, superheroes, and even a spot of breakdancing. Let's get into our quick questions with Matt. I am eight years old. I love tennis and it's so fun to play. I like Captain Jack Sparrow because I like pirates. One time when Boogie put in, then my pants fell down. The grossest food in the world is eggs because they smell like poo. I can't reach my nose, but I'm, I guess I gotta lick my toes. <laughs> my best dance move is the worm. I want to go to the USA so I can go to Disneyland. My favourite song's Uptown Funk because it's awesome. I can do this. And I can do this. <laughs> Next up, we've got Craft with Carly Sparkle. Hi, I'm Miss Strawberry. And today we are doing Awesome Craft. And here is Sprout. Hello! Hi. How are you going? Good. So today is all about arts and craft, isn't it? Yeah, especially recycle craft. Great, let's get to it. Okay, we're up here, up here. Hi, I'm Isabella, and here is Carly Sparkle. Hi. So Carly Sparkle, today is all about recycled puppets, isn't it? It certainly is, and you wouldn't believe how easy these are to make. So should we get started? Sure. We need recycled bottles, scissors, a paintbrush, a marker, some fake eyes, split pins, cotton balls, lids, paint and glue. So let's get our gloves off and let's get into business. 
So, first up, we need a bottle. Perfect. And uh, we need to cut it. This bit is a bit dangerous, so you might need your parents to do them. Oh, thank you. So, um, can I tell you why we're going to cut it? We're going to cut it because we need a little space like this to fit our hand in so that the puffer will work. So, yes, like Isabella said, you do need an adult to do this bit because it can be a little bit tough. But basically, all you need to do is cut around the bottom of your container like this until it's gone. And then we just need to cut about an area to fit your wrist in. So, Isabella, we don't need a very big hole. So we're just going to cut just like this so that we can fit you in. Once you've done this, now comes the fun bit. Isabella, would you like to paint? Sure. So, there you go. All right, I'm going to make my character purple. So I'm going to mix red and blue. Ooh, that's looking great, Isabella. Maybe a little bit more red so we can get that nice purple. So our next step is to start painting. Carly Sparkle, I have a feeling this is going to take a little while. It's funny that you should say that, Isabella, because um, here's one we prepared earlier. Ta-da! <laughs> so we finished it up a bit by putting some yellow spots and some lines, and then Isabella, maybe I think a little bit of black texture around there, just to make it stand out. That is looking really good. So, Isabella, what kind of a... Uh, Insect, would you call this a fly? Yeah, I reckon it's a fly too, but really you could make any insect you want to. Once we've done that, we are going to make some wings because it's really important for our fly to have some wings, wouldn't you agree? Mm-hmm. Okay. And for some wings, we need another plastic bottle. Aha. Uh -huh. So, how do you think we cut this one? Hmm. Maybe up the top there. Oh yeah. And then if we cut it around here, I wonder if we can make some wings. What do you reckon? Should I give it a go? Yeah. All right. So again, this is pretty dangerous, so you might want your parents to do it. And I'm gonna cut the top too. That all the way around. There you go. Now it doesn't quite look like wings yet. But I've got an idea. If we cut this in half, ta-da, and cut the other side like that, I'm going to cut up the middle here as well, just to give us a little bit more of a shape. So now, our wings would fit just like that. Must mean we need some more painting, right? Right, that's yours. There you go. Oh, so, Isabella, this is probably going to take a long time. Uh, what are those magic words again? Here's something we prepared earlier. Ta-da! You did such a good job on the painting, too. So, we've got our wings. I want to hold those. We've got our fly body. Um, we need to attach it somehow. We could use split pins. Aha! Uh -huh. And in case you didn't know what a split pin is, it's just this very nifty piece of metal that can bend and fold and help things to spin around. Okay, now, we've already made a little hole. Um, this would be something you need a little help with, just to make a hole through the wings and a hole into the body of your fly. And then we push the split pin in like that. All right, Isabella, it looks like it's almost finished. Um, something's missing, though. Uh, yeah, the eyes. Of course. So, Kai, can you pass me the cotton balls? Certainly. Do you want to hold that? And we'll stick um, those. One, two. And we'll stick those on. Can you pass me the glue? Perfect. Great. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue on the cotton ball. Now for our googly eyes. Ah, uh, okay, great. 
great. Now, Carly, what if you don't have any googly eyes? Aha! Uh -huh. It's really easy just to cut some black cardboard out and you can use um, the little eyes like that and stick them on. Or you could even paint a black dot onto your um, cotton ball. Looking good. There we go, he can see. What a good looking insect. He looks great, but Isabel, what's his name? Hmm, how about Freddy? I like that name, Freddy the Fly. Ta-da, that is so cool. Thanks so much, Carly Sparkle. No worries. Um, hello. Hello. My Jono. My name's Sprout, what's yours? Freddy the Fly. <laughs>
But then we've got these big ones over here. They're a bit of an orangey brown in colour. So they ones, they probably live in amongst, more amongst the rocks and the weed and the sand of the ocean. So depending on where they're found, their colour is to help them hide or to camouflage where they live. Well, I have a question about the blue. Yeah? Why is they so rough at the top and soft near the bottom? All right, they're hard on top, aren't they? And they're smoothed underneath. Yeah. Okay, well, they need to be tough on top because these sea stars live where the waves crash and bash on top of them on the rocks and on the corals. So they need tough bodies to protect them in that harsh environment. But because the waves are crashing on, bot on the top of them, underneath where they're sitting on the rocks all the time, they're quite smooth, but they're still hard. So yeah. that's why they're tough, to protect them. Were they able to have a little pat? I think you should have a little pat. We're going to see how we're going to go. Let's go, let's have a pat. How does it feel? It feels a little bumpy. Yeah. But in here it feels smooth. And smooth. Do you know why he gets to feel that hard? We know it's to protect him. Yeah. But what they do is they suck water into their body. And they, they can have muscles. Yep, and they hold it in their body really tight under lots of pressure so that they can be tough so the waves don't hurt them and pull them apart. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. about sea stars. First there's little dots that's in on the bottom of them and that makes them crawl around. Then there's this little tiny star at the, in the middle of it and that's the mouth and if they're hungry they suck out their stomach and eat and go over the, over the food and then they suck it back in again. Look. You see all those little tube feet? He's moving around. Yeah. So What's he's, it doing? Well, he's probably looking for food because he's been in that container this afternoon and he's probably looking around for food. And he likes to eat food called algae. Do you know what algae is? No. It's a plant-like material. And like all plants, it needs sunlight to grow. So that's why they're found in the shallow water where the waves crash and bash on them because they're there to try and eat the algae. OK? Hey, now, is if the that algae... like a bit of seaweed or something? Well, it's a bit like seaweed, yeah. It's like a little fine plant that lives on the rocks and on the corals in the shallow water. So they're there eating the algae off the rocks and the corals. But where you get shallow water, you get the waves crashing and bashing. So that's why yeah. they need to be tough. Would I ever to touch him? Yeah, you... I'll tell you what. If you touch him really carefully along that groove where all those little tube feet are, you watch. If you do it gently, he'll tuck those little tube feet away. See how you go, because you want to protect them because they're soft. See that? Run your finger all the way along. I feel funny. Actually, you're being so gentle, he's not even worried about that. Can you believe that? I got one last question about the sea stars. Yes. How do they eat? That is a very good question. All right. The sea stars have an unusual way of eating their food. See right in the middle there? Right in the middle where all their tube feet meet? Yeah. Well, that's where their mouth is. Now, when a sea star wants to eat their food, they crawl over the top of their food and they spit their tummy outside their mouth. They soak up the food across their tummy and when they've had enough, they suck their tummy back inside their body again. Right in the middle underneath, do you remember what we said about that? Oh uh, no, I don't, don't say it. What does he do? That's his, where his tummy is, yeah. And what does he do with it? Does it stay in there or does it, what happens with his tummy? It comes... Yeah, Yeah, it comes... Yeah. <laughs> You don't, you don't want to say it? No. No, are you sure? I want you to say it. Oh, you say it then. What does he do with his tummy? He spits it out. Then he stops the tummy back in. Oh, he does. He sucks his tummy. That's a weird way to eat. Is Mum going to eat her dinner like that tonight? No. I don't know, I reckon. Do you think she's done it before? No. Well, I hope not. Mum's going to do it. Do you know why they need to do it? No. Because where do we say they get their food from? They Off the rocks in the shallow water? So. You try eating your rocks off the shallow water with the waves crashing and bashing all over the top of you. You're going to be able to get your knife and fork out to eat the algae off the rocks. But so how are they going to eat? Have, if you have the sticky parts, yep. you will. And that's right. You've got sticky parts that hold on while the waves are crashing and bashing. And then the only way you can eat your food while all that's happening is to spit your tummy out from underneath your mouth, soak up your food, suck your tummy back inside your body and move to another part of the rock and do the same thing. Does that make you know, sense now? Yeah, but yeah. I got one thing to say. Well, yes. Last 
a couple of years ago when I was walk when I was walking like more than five years ago. Yeah. Um, what happened was I was down at Ivory Car New South Wales and I kept running across the beach yeah. and I saw a massive flight come yeah. and it went over me but a man over there, I didn't know who he was, but a big starfish, one of these starfish fell on his head and he couldn't get it off. It fell out of the wave on his head? Wow, you are so lucky to have seen that and, because that would be one he, of the million. he couldn't took it take it off his head. Did he look funny? Yeah, I called him Star, Star Man. Star Man. His name wasn't David Bowie, was it? Okay. Now we are going to the scene action. Why is it brown and spiky? Why is it brown and spiky? Well, like with a lot of the other animals, the brown colour probably helps it hide and camouflage will be hidden amongst the rocks. So that's why the colour. Now the spikes, there's got a few different reasons for those spikes. Doesn't it have poison in their body? Well, no, they don't have poison, and but some sea urchins are venomous, OK? Some have venom in their spines to help protect them even more so they don't get eaten by predators and sharks from above. But they also use their spines for walking along the bottom of the ocean looking for food. Did you know that some fish have learnt to flick them upside down and smash them and eat them from underneath where their spines are short? So then the sea urchins use their spines to wedge in amongst the rocks and the corals so the fish can't flick them upside down and eat them. So the spines of the sea urchins are really important to them. You're very spiky. Very spiky. A bit like a spiky hairbrush? No. My hairbrush is pretty spiky. So Ebony, all these animals we've seen here today, which one's your favourite and why? Um, my favourite is the red starfish. Like, you like the red starfish? Do we call them starfish or we call them sea stars? Sea stars. And why is he your favourite? Because it likes me patting it. It likes you, it did seem to like you patting it. It's pretty cool, isn't he? Do you know what? You're the only person I've ever seen pat a sea star from underneath and not have his feet tuck away. That's the first time I've ever seen that. So I you're very clever. I think, um, uh, I think it likes me. I think it does too. Do you think we'll call him a name? You're going to give him a name? Yeah. What are we going to call him? I'm going to call him um, Reggie. Reggie. I like Reggie. Good um, work. Reggie the sea star. I want to say something yes. before we go. I want to thank you for coming and bringing all the animals. Oh, thank, you know what? Thank you for letting me come and help teach you all about them because they're pretty cool animals and we've learnt lots today, haven't we? Yeah. Do you think we need to look after them? I think we should stop littering and start helping to help survive, make animals survive and protect them. Absolutely. From damage awesome. and disease. Absolutely. Very good. Now let's meet the Wayfinders. Hi, I'm Amelia. I'm 12 years old and today I'm going to be interviewing Natalie, one of the volunteers. Hi. <laughs> so, what do you do around here? I'm a volunteer with the Children's Hospital Foundation and I'm a Wayfinder. And my job is to help you guys get around the hospital. So if you can't ever get lost, just come and look for the green shirt and we're happy to help. We're going to take these lifts over here, level A ones, and then we're going to go right up to the blue four and as you walk out it'll be bright blue. So where do we find you? Alright, so we live here on main reception level two. Yeah. Uh, we also man level one desk and if you just see us around in the green shirt, we're happy to be approached. Ooh. So, this is a pretty big hospital. Do you have any tips for finding your way around? Yeah, so each floor is colour coded and there's the A lifts and the B lifts. If you're heading up to 12, you go the B lifts, but if you only go to level seven, A lifts is your best option. Do you ever need your own wayfinder? Yeah, um, so I get lost a few times, but I'll let you in on a secret. This is my little wayfinder book and it tells me where everything is located. 
So, what's your favourite part of your job? I love helping people get to where they want to go. I, I get to talk to them, get to say a quick hello, make sure they're having a good day and then, yeah, show them where they go. That's cool. And one final question in this category. Um, how long have you worked here for? Um, so I've been here since the beginning of the year. Mm. Now for the hard-hitting question. What is your favourite food? OK, my favourite food is probably uh, seafood marinara. Mm. It's like a pasta with seafood. It's really yummy. What's your favourite animal? Uh, I love dolphins. I think they're very smart and intelligent. And what is your favourite song? So, not maybe a favourite song, but a favourite genre. I love Disney songs. Disney so, song, yeah. anything Disney, I'm pretty good with listening Can you sing to. Sing one? I sing one. Um, Look at this stuff, isn't it neat? Wouldn't, Wouldn't you think my collection's, collection's complete? complete? Wouldn't you think <laughs> I'm a girl, a girl who has anything? I don't know much of that song at all, but OK. <laughs> and finally, what do you like to do when you're not volunteering around the hospital? Yeah, so I support the Brisbane Lions. Uh, they're one of my favourite teams. Mm -hmm. And I also go to trivia every week and just hang with my friends. And what do you like to do? Well, I really like singing and I like playing with my pets and animals. Yeah. So you have pets? So what are their yes. names? I have two dogs and two cats. The dogs' names are Woody and Piper and the cats' names are Ruby and Elvis. Oh, very cute. Yeah. But thank you for joining us today and thank you for all the help you do around the hospital to help us find our way. Great. Thank you for interviewing me and I look forward to seeing all you guys around the hospital. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching Juice TV. See you next time. Bye. What was I going to say? Oh. <laughs> and I help you guys um, get. Oh my god! Get lost. How do I get past that bit? You Sorry. help. You help them get lost, which is yeah, the opposite of your job. So I've been here since the beginning of the year. Mm. So how long is that? Like <laughs> six months, five months, and the players wanna play, 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 and the haters gonna pay, 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 pay. Maybe I'm just gonna shake, 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 shake it off, shake it off. <laughs> <laughs> Remember guys, it's so easy to be a part of Juice TV. Whether you want to be a host, help us out behind the scenes with filming, or decide what goes into each episode, let us know you want to be involved by sending an email to hello at juicetv.com.au or speak to one of the friendly volunteers throughout the hospital in the green shirts. Also head to our website and Facebook page for all the updates about what we're filming at the hospital.